Hey folks, Randy Go Trout Magnet Man with you here today. Uh, today, folks, we're going to take a look at the two Mabayru rods I still have in my collection. Uh, I've owned about four or five Mabayru rods over the years. Uh, the early ones I bought with the uh, Sky Road and the uh, uh, Crustage rods, they've long since been gone. I mean, I got rid of those years ago. Those were entry level rods. Uh, I've got a couple of rods left. I've had to sell off uh, a, a very fine Mabayru rod uh, in order to continue my habit of buying JDM rods. I sold off the Rock and Finesse by Ticked. It's an absolutely fantastic rod. If you can get one, I highly suggest you do so. They make excellent crappie rods. You can have fun catching bluegill with them. Uh, sensitivity is off the charts. Uh, it's just a fantastic rod. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't want to sell it, but when you're buying as many rods as I do, you got to sell something or you got to come into a lot of money some some way, some kind of how. Uh, so that's part of this business. Uh, you know, you, you, you get rods that, you know, you may still want to use them from time to time, but you know you want to try new rods. So you need to uh, you need to sell some to, to get some new ones. That's just the way it is. But today we're going to look at uh, two rods I have left. The... Uh, Graphite Leader Finesse Prototype and the Ticked Rockin' Drift, which is a very unique rod in its own right. And we will discuss that a little bit later. Uh, right now, I'm going to put uh, a little uh, uh, video up there where I was out in the sun to show you what the aesthetics of these two rods look at. So let's take a look at that video and then we'll be back uh, to talk about the rods. Okay, folks, we're going to try to show you these, my Bayrou rods, the two that I have left. That's the Graphite Leader Finesse Prototype, and this is the Ticked Ice Cube Rock and Drift, the purple one. These are beautiful rods. They're both just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and we're going to get back in the house and do a video and uh, talk about these rods, but just wanted to give you a little indication of what the aesthetics are on the rods. Of course, the Graphite Leader uh, Finesse Prototype has the red trims with the black, and the Ticked Ice Cube Rock and Drift has the purple. With some purple inserts and some uh, winding checks there. Uh, I like it. I, I, I like the way it looks. So let's uh, let's go talk about the rods. Okay, folks, we're back. Now, the rod, the Graphite Leader, it's an absolutely gorgeous rod. Finesse prototype. Uh, I bought this after buying the Graphite Leader Corto uh, aging rod. Uh, I just wanted to see what graphite rods are all about, and this rod is a beautiful rod. Uh, the build quality is impeccable. It's made in Japan. Uh, the problem that I had with the rod, and it, I think anybody that owns this rod, uh, as one gentleman who uh, I'm uh, acquainted with, uh, he got one of these rods, and his thoughts were he didn't know exactly what to do with it. Well, that can be the case. It's not a rod you want to catch bluegill with. You can catch bluegill with it, but it's not It's not a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's a very fast rod. It's extremely fast. Uh, make no mistake, though, it's an ultralight rod. And what I use this rod for, and I will put a video up here. You take a look at this. You can see the bending curve of me landing some trophy smallmouth up at Dale Hollow on this rod. Uh, this rod is rated for uh, three pound test max online, uh, 0.4 PE, uh, which is higher than three pounds, but it's rated for three pound nylon, that's the max. But now this is great. If I'm going to go to Dale Hollow and I'm going to go after bluegill even at Dale Hollow, I'll take this rod. I can have fun with it. And the reason I would take this rod, because up at Dale Hollow, in the spring, you fishing for bluegill, you're going to get into smallmouth, and you better not go up there with an area trout rod uh, or, 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 say, the uh, Abu Garcia Super Ultralight. Uh, it may not end well because even though you find a bluegill bed and you'll be catching bluegill one right after another, those smallmouth will be hanging around those beds trying to get an easy lunch, and uh, you will hook them. And I'm talking about up to 20, 21 inches uh, quite regularly. And so that's why I would take this rod with me to Dale Hollow. It's not a rod you would want to buy to catch crappie with, although I have caught a, a bunch of crappie with this rod, but it's just not fun. This is a beast of an ultralight rod. Um, it's uh, at, the, at the top of the heap when you talk about build quality. Uh, of course, uh, Graphite Leader, the Made in Japan rods are absolutely uh, impeccable on the build quality. This is a pretty rod with the red winding checks, the red trim. Uh, some uh, 
red thread right in here, but then the rest of the thread up through here is just black. But uh, this is a high, pretty high-tech blank. Well, it was when I bought it anyway. Uh, you can look that up on uh, Graphite Leader's website, what's in the blank material here. But these are a beast of a rod. I'm not sure, uh, you know, just how big rockfish, light rockfish or small rockfish get. I don't know. Uh, but this rod has a heck of a butt on it. Now, it's a beautiful rod. If you're looking for a 6 foot 10 inch rod that's an ultralight, this is true ultralight, uh, that you can go out and catch uh, your Kentucky bass, your smallmouth, uh, big trout, uh, this would be the rod for it. Uh, it can get it done. It's not a rod that I take out every day because the bluegill, you start getting into five, six, inch bluegill, seven inch bluegill, it's not any fun on this rod. Nine inch bluegill, yeah, that could be fun on this rod. But this rod is just very unique in what it was designed for. And uh, as you will see here in a moment, when I show you the ticked ice cube rock and drift, evidently graphite leader and ticked have a couple of different uh, outlooks on how my Bayrou rod should be. And that's why, you know, I don't know what my Bayrou rods I could recommend for folks to get other than the ticked, because I have used those and I know what they're like. But uh, I tried this, uh, you know, I wanted to see what it was like. As they say, education doesn't come cheap and you gotta spend your money to learn. Well, I learned uh, while I won't be getting rid of this rod because uh, it, it does have a purpose. It's just, I don't, it's not one I would use a, a whole lot each year. But, uh, you know, my Bayrou rods are, are, are really, uh, well, I shouldn't say, I, I was gonna say something about my Bayrou rods, but I shouldn't say that because uh, you know, I already see the difference between graphite leaders, my Bayrou rods, and uh, uh, ticked my Bayrou rods. Now, the major craft my Bayrou rods I had, the the lower entry rods, were somewhere between the ticked Ice Cube series and this Finesse prototype. As far as the action goes, they were they were fast. They're not as fast as this rod. They're not as rigid as this rod. Uh, but uh, this uh, this rod, if you're looking for a rod to catch, uh, you want to catch some, be an ultralight angler for largemouth, uh, smallmouth, Kentucky bass, this rod will serve the purpose. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but bluegill rod, crappie rod, like I said, it works. And it's sensitive. It's sensitive off the charts. But you're just not going to have a whole lot of fun uh, catching crappie. And I think I have a crappie video of this. And if I do, I'll put it up here if I can find it. Uh, I know I have one to catch some smallies with this rod. Um, and it, 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 it worked out real well for that. Now, this is about a unique rod as I've ever had come out of Japan. This is the Ticked Ice Cube Rockin' Drift six foot nine inch Toro, uh, which the Toro is, uh, or the T-O-R, I should say. That's for the Torzite, Torzite, T-O-R. I, I call it Toro, that's not correct. As you can see, if you can see here in this poor lighting I have here, you can see the, the purple winding checks. You can see the purple insert here uh, where the uh, real seat meets up to the blank. This rod is much, much softer. As you can see this, it's much, much softer than the graphite leader. Now this rod, I have used this rod to catch <laughs> thousands of fish years ago. I have a video or two uh, since I started doing YouTube of me using this rod. So you can, I'm gonna put that video up here also where you can see what the bending curve looks like on this rod. The unique thing about this rod is this whole upper section, the whole second section is solid carbon fiber. Uh, this was an expensive rod. Uh, I mean, when I ordered this rod, I was puckering because I said, I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, this rod, folks, and I haven't fished it in a while, but I'm going to tell you something. This rod is almost like uh, a Zen rod. You're, you're, you're like one with the rod. It's like, it's almost like you can sense a fish is going to bite this before he does. I mean, this rod, uh, I don't know why they quit producing these rods, maybe because of the expense. I don't know. I don't have a clue. Uh, but I know that this rod is definitely different. You can have fun with bluegill with this rod. Uh, you can have fun with crappie. It's an excellent crappie rod. I have caught a ton of crappie with the uh, uh, ticked ice cube rock and drift. 
Uh, it's been years ago. Like I said, I have very few videos of me using the rock and drift. What happens is you get all these new rods and, you know, you want to try them all out. And then pretty soon as one you've had for, you know, seven, eight, nine years, they kind of get pushed back in the corner. Not that there's, you know, they're still great rods. You just, you know, you've got other rods you're wanting to try and use. And I need to fish this more. And I'm going to get out to spring and I'm going to fish the tick a little bit more than I've been fishing it. Uh, I can go below Nickajack and have fun with bluegill with this rod, have a ball. And like I said, the, the rod, the sensitivity of this rod is it's as sensitive as any rod I got, maybe more so. It's just a, 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 a thing. And this rod has what I call the automatic hooking. Uh, there is no setting the hook on here. You don't have to set the hook. Uh, the fish hook themselves with this rod. Uh, I think it has something to do with the unique characteristics of the whole upper section being uh, completely solid instead of just the tip. I mean, you know, I got a lot of solid tip rods, which is about from here to here that are solid tip, but the rest of it is, is tubular uh, graphite. This is one whole solid section. And believe you me, it makes a difference on the rod. Uh, absolutely love fishing with it. Now, who are my Bayrou rods for? Well, I can tell you the ticked rock and finesse uh, uh, and the ticked uh, rock and power would be great for you if you're a crappie angler. They're second to none. You're not going to find hardly any better crappie rods. Now, you might get the uh, Abu Garcia Slow Taper Special, six foot seven, but there again, that's, that's not a Mabayru rod. That's a hybrid like game rod. Uh, Mabayru rods from Tick, I have found Ice Cube Series, they make fantastic rods. As a matter of fact, Tick makes a uh, short Mabayru rod, which you very rarely see short Mabayru rods. Uh, they make one that is, I'm pulling it up here now. I don't want to give you any bad information. They make an ice cube rod that's six foot three inches. I would love to have one, but there's a reason I don't have one. It's a one piece rod. Number one, one piece, or first issue is number, or first issue is one piece rods out of Japan. Costs a lot of money to ship. And for whatever reason, one piece rods more often than not get hit with customs fees, which is not a lot of money, but you're adding, you know, $40, $50, and then you're adding extra shipping. And pretty soon you, you've got a very expensive rod. But the biggest deal, I don't get a one-piece rod, they do not transport well. You're going to wind up breaking them, especially ultralight rods, and I do not like one-piece rods anymore. I mean, I just don't, especially when you're paying, you know, $200, $300, $400, $500 for a rod. Uh, one-piece rods are just hard to transport safely. I don't care who you are or where you're at. That's just a fact. But I would love to try that rod. Tick uh, makes some super sensitive rods. Tick used to list the graphite content of their rods, they quit doing that. I don't know why. Uh, like most rod builders, uh, uh, Tick is, is very secretive about their blanks. Uh, even rod builders here in the States are very secretive about their blanks. They don't want people to know how they do them. Uh, but they used to list the graphite content and the graphite content that were on the Ice Cube series when they still listed was 99 point something percent. And I can believe that because these rods are sensitive off the charts. Now, lest you think if you get a fish on this rock and drift, which you can't get these, I mean, I think there's some used ones for sale out there, but they're very rare. They're very hard to come by. I didn't get it on video. It was years ago. I was fishing with my late nephew, and uh, I got a 30-pound drum in on this rod. I had this rod, the tick rock and drift. I had that rod doubled up into a U. And my nephew was shying back from me because he thought the rod was going to break. And I thought it was going to break too, but it didn't. I mean, I, I was fishing with 3.75 pound test line and uh, I had my drag set right, but I, I was laying it to that drum. I wanted to land it and I did land it and the rod held up. It held up fine. So uh, if you have one of these or if you're thinking about getting one, if you find a used one you like, I wouldn't be worried about, you know, landing bigger fish with it. It's just... It's not a big fish rod though. It's just, it's just not because of, of the nature of the rod, the action of the rod. It's just not a big fish rod. But my Bayrou rods, I don't have a whole lot of recommendations other than the Ticked Ice Cube series. They're fantastic. Uh, you know, I know Major Craft uh, has some Bayrou rods, but I haven't, you know, these are the only Bayrou rods I've owned. Uh, I don't plan on getting any more unless, you know, Something comes out about some new one somewhere that I think I must have it, so I'm going to order it. Uh, 
as I've told y'all before, right now I'm interested in the uh, area trout rods and the hybrid light game rods. The hybrid light game rods, folks, seem to be the rods you, you really want as an ultralight angler in the States that you'd want to buy because you can get one rod and it can cover a whole lot of bases. You can have fun on bluegill, you can land spotted bass with it, you can land smallmouth with it, and yet still have fun on smaller fish. Those rods are really a big bang for the buck because of the way they're constructed. Uh, and that they seem to be coming on more and more in, out of Japan now as the light game rod, the hybrid light game rod. So I really, really, really going to set my sights on getting more of those. As a matter of fact, I've got a hybrid light game rod that's shipped. It should be here this week. We'll do a review unboxing on it, and I'll tell you all about that rod. And unless I miss my guess, since it's such a bargain, when I tell you about that rod, uh, a couple of you are going to want to go out and buy it and because it is a bargain. It's a true bargain, and I don't know how much longer this guy's going to have these rods. Uh, but uh, uh, at that price, but it's a heck of a price, I can tell you that. So anyway, folks, hope all of you are doing well. I uh, hope all of you are healthy. Hope you're out able to fish. Uh, I went to Nickajack the other day. Uh, this time of year at Nickajack, it should be covered up with white bass. Wasn't, wasn't no fish there. Don't ask me where they were at. I knew when I pulled in the parking lot down there, I didn't see any cars in there, I seen one boat. Uh, there's a guy out there fishing for walleye and sauger. I see him. He's, he fishes every day down there. I asked him, did he see any white bass in his ventures for the sauger and walleye? He did not. Uh, I don't know where they're at. Uh, I've been fishing Nickajack Tail Race for five years. This time of year, there's been thousands upon thousands of white bass below that dam. I mean, without fail. But they're not there. They weren't there the other day. They just weren't. I don't know where they're at, but of course, I'll keep going. But uh, that sure is a long drive to go down there and not catch any fish. But uh, enjoyed getting out, although it was still cold, uh, but uh, would much prefer to be some fish there. So anyway, folks, I appreciate the support of the channel. Appreciate you watching. And uh, so once again, sore lip them all, and life is good.